Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. Dr. Roberts discusses the features of specific organisms under direct microscopic examination using multiple preparations. This module examines candida and malassezia. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Sharon, for that introduction. I have nothing to disclose. This is an ongoing presentation that focuses on the individual organisms as we see them in the direct ex examination of clinical specimens. In other presentations, we have discussed the different uh, staining methods that are useful for detecting fungi, and they are listed on the next two slides. And they uh, are all are useful if uh, taken in the right context. And so I think the thing to pe for people to remember is that when you're looking at a, at a stain that is not designed to detect fungi, that you have to think clinical microbiology, as I've mentioned many times before, so that you look for a fungi and a stain that is not designed to detect them, but you can see them. The next slide uh, is a discussion of candida species. Uh, with candida, there is uh, something that you can use that is very helpful for trying to make an identification of candida in clinical specimens, and that is that you have to remember that it's a yeast, but it also is a polymorphic yeast. It's a yeast that has more than probably three forms, at least more than two forms, and uh, if you see any combination of forms that we talk about here, you know that you're dealing with one of the candida species, and there are a huge number of species within that particular genus. So one of the things that you would see would be uh, yeast and pseudohyphae or hyphae. You can see yeast cells by themselves, any one of these three by themselves, or you can see a combination of any of these. So yeast and pseudohyphae or yeast and hyphae uh, would be uh, a combination that you could see, or you might find pseudohyphae and hyphae. And so any combination of those. Yeast and pseudohyphae uh, are a little bit difficult to recognize in some ways because the yeast cells, as you know, reproduce by budding. Pseudohyphae are nothing more than yeast cells that have uh, elongated and remained attached to each other, and they have constricted ends. If you look at the end of the cells, they're kind of rounded down where they connect, and they look like links of sausages. And then with septate hyphae, this makes it even much more difficult if you don't see any other form because it could be just another mold. In fact, you're dealing with the yeast. But candida can produce septate hyphae, and generally it produces one of these other forms, either yeast and pseudohyphae, along with the hyphae, one of those two or both, uh, with uh, the hep septate hyphae. And in cases of thrush, you might find just septate hyphae. So you can find any combination of those, and that's a trick, is learning to recognize the different forms. This is the example here of candida. Showing budding yeast cells, if you look on the right hand side, you see the individual cells that are sitting out there. This happens to be a PAS stain slide. You can see the budding yeast cells, some are kind of elongated, some of them are round, they have buds on them. And then there are pseudohyphae that are in the uh, center of the slide where the cells are kind of elongated and they're attached to each other. And you almost looks like there's a space between them, but there's really not. It's just where the ends are constricted down, narrowed down. And then you may find just true, set, true septate hyphae, as we mentioned before, or any combination thereof. This is an example of what looks like micro colonies of candida in a sputum sample. This happens to be a phase contrast microscopy photograph. And that's what you're really looking at are just m small, minute colonies of candida. And those are hyphae that are being produced in there. So you would want to look around and try to see what more you can find when you're looking at the specimen. The next slide is from a urine. You can see the epithelial cells in the background and probably some casts in there. And if you look in there, you notice that there are some cells that are budding that have a bud on the end of them. There are some hyphae in there. And uh, those, that two, those are two features of Canada. And yeah, I don't really see what look like pseudo-hyphae in there. So it's a combination of hyphae and uh, some budding cells. And this would be enough to make it and identification of candida. You can't tell which species of candida you're looking at because they pretty much all look alike. Uh, 
in the clinical specimen, but uh, it would be a, certainly a member of the genus Candida. Next slide came from a patient with thrush, and basically what you're looking at are septate hyphae in there. And so you see that there's a large filament in there in the center that's going up and down. There are two cells to about maybe 330, but in the middle of, this, of the field, that look like they've elongated and they kind of tapered down. Those might be the beginning of two pieces of pseudo hyphae, but for the most part, all those things are hyphae in there, even in the background uh, with the, amongst the squamous cells. The next slide shows you uh, virtually the same thing. Those are hyphae in there, and on the left side, about maybe 9 o'clock, going towards the center of the field, you see two cells that are constricted down and kind of elongated, and those are probably the beginning of pseudo hyphae. This is just one thing that you might see with Canada. I would move, if I were looking at it, I would look at several fields before I made an identification. This next slide shows you nothing more than just a bunch of budding yeast cells sitting in there. And then, it's a little difficult to tell, I think those are probably pseudo hyphae in there. You have to look very closely to notice that the cells taper down at the point where they're connected to each other. They look almost like hyphae. So any combination of those is a trick. The next slide is a calcal for white stain of Canada, and what you see in there are some buds coming off the sides of what look like hyphae, and you probably see some septations in those hyphae, and once you see the buds in the septate hyphae, that's simply enough to call it a Canada. This is just a slide. The next slide here shows you budding yeast cells, and a couple of them are have elongated, one in the middle. Uh, towards the top a little bit is elongated and has a bud on it. This might be all that you see. In this case, it would be difficult to say it belongs to the genus Canada because there's nothing there that tells you that it is, is a Canada species. There are lots of other yeast that have budding cells. And so in this one, I would have to look around a lot more before I'd be able to call it a Canada. The next one shows you what you've seen before, and there are budding yeast cells in there and there is septate hyphae in there. You can see what looks like the beginning of pseudo hyphae. Almost in the middle of the field, you see one of the pieces of pseudo hyphae that have kind of constricted down, and maybe almost in the center of the slide. Most of you are looking at budding yeast cells and hyphae. This is a gram stain of a urine, and you're seeing budding yeast cells and pseudo hyphae. So that's good enough to call it Canada. The name for the budding cells is blastoconidia, a plural term. This is the slide that you saw earlier, and it simply shows you budding yeast cells, and there are pseudo hyphae in there as well. This is a PAS stain slide. The next one is the very same, showing you there what looks like hyphae. You can see the long filaments in there. They don't have any narrowing between the cells. They're, it's hard to see if they're septate. They should be, but it's difficult to see on this particular slide. But bottom line is you have two different forms in there, and. Uh, this would be a member of the genus Canada. This the next slide just shows you a gram stain, showing you some, some random budding yeast cells in there, and in the center is what looks like pseudo hyphae. And if you look at between this, the segments of this thing, you'll notice that they're narrowed down and almost, uh, not say pointed, but there's a space, it looks like there's a V in between the two cells, top and bottom, going towards the center of the cell. These are just yeast cells of Canada, but looking at that, that's all you have to see. Um, you might be concerned that it's some other organism besides the Canada. This next one is a blood film. This is from a patient who has fungemia, and in this particular slide, all you see are but in yeast cells. For the most part, in pa patients who have a candidemia or a fungemia, let's just say fungemia, most of the time it's caused by Canada, and so based on the odds, even though you don't see any other forms in there, it's going to be a Canada. It's not very often that you see some of the other things. It does happen, but the most common thing would be Canada, and so it would be Canada fungemia. Same thing in this next slide, just shows you budding yeast cells, and that's about all you can say. Next slide is from a kidney. This is a silver stain, and you can see in there that there are some budding, it's a little hard to see, but there are some some what look like a lot of pseudo hyphae in there and I'm looking to see everything is pretty small there are some budding yeast cells in there so this would be a candida if you had it on a higher power you'd be able to tell a bit more about the morphology but you have more than one form in there so it's, it belongs to candida same thing in the next slide 
it's a bit more difficult to see on this one this is a silver stain and it's pretty pretty over stained and you can see in the, in the, it's hard to tell what the features of the organism really are the next slide shows you uh, silver stain and the counter stain in the background is a dye called light green and you can see single cells in there with buds on those are budding yeast cells and then there are some pseudo hyphae in there at about maybe 230 you can see that there's some look like sausages and uh, pieces like that all around in the field the next slide is a silver stain again I think it's a silver stain I'm not quite convinced that's what it is but if you look you see the darkly stained areas in there those would be some pieces of hyphae and if you look in the background notice that there are a number of cells that didn't take up the dark stain and this actually could be a gram stain I think it maybe is is more what it is because you see some filaments that happen to be sort of blue and some of them that happen to be uh, stained red in the background so this is probably a gram stain of Canada uh, from a piece of tissue and so it is not easy sometimes to make identification of Canada when you don't have everything that's typical so that's how you would recognize at least uh, some of the species of Canada and most of the time Canada albicans is the one you're going to be seeing in the clinical specimen the next yeast that we're going to talk about is one called Malassezia furfur, and this the hallmark of this organism is that it is the smallest yeast that one would see in a clinical specimen. It, in the skin, it would have yeast and, and pseudo hyphae or hyphae in present in the skin. In blood, in blood, if you had an isolate from blood, you happen to look at some blood, you would see it just has small yeast in there, and that's all. And uh, it may form pseudo hyphae sometimes not all that often and then when there are lots of cells of this organism compacted together it does not form a mosaic a lot of times with Canada the cells will be in a closed space pushed together and they take on the shape of whatever the space is they don't they, they get pushed together the sides flatten but between the two cells with Malassezia the cells are rigid and so there's no mosaic there the cells are round they stay round even if they're pushed together and that's something that uh, we use sometimes when we're trying to distinguish candida from malassezia in skin. If this happens to be malassezia um, in blood, and the cells are very, very small, they're 1 to 4.5, about 2 to 4.5 microns in size. They bud at one end, so they exhibit what's called monopolar budding. The bud is separated by septum, and there's a fission plate in there. They almost look like a small blastomyces, very tiny and whenever the bud is produced it leaves a scar behind that looks like a small collar that you see with blastomyces and malassezia furfur is one of a number of uh, yeast and that belong to that genus and it happens to be one that is lipophilic and lipophilic just means that it has to have a, 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 a lipid source before it can grow so the hallmark of this organism is you might recover it from a patient who has fungemia and maybe in the blood you recover it from the blood culture and then you try to subculture to get a pure culture to identify it and it won't grow and the reason it won't grow is because there's no lipid there and it's lipid in the present in the blood because the patient's getting an infusion of, lip for, of lipid for lipid replacement therapy this happens to be from skin teeny versicolor is the name of the infection and you see uh, budding cells and you see hyphae and that's what you see and uh, this this infection teeny versicolor is a fairly common thing to see and if you just take a piece of skin and look at it this is what you probably would would recognize with malassezia you may find just hyphal fragments but I think you would have to look around the whole field to find a whole uh, slide to find other morphologic forms and there would be yeast cells and again there's no mosaic pattern with with this one this happens to be from skin and if you look closely in the background you see all the yeast cells that are nice and round and they're rigid in their uh, structure and then you see in the background pieces of hyphae sitting in there some people describe a way to remember this is to, to describe it as spaghetti and meatballs and that's kind of what it looks like another one where you move it over a field and all you see are hyphae and with that you couldn't tell what it is you'd have to look around more to be able to decide if it's uh, you're going to find yeast cells in there. The next slide is the PAS stain slide, and there you're seeing just hyphae. And again, you could not say these are septate hyphae. You could not say this is malassezia. 
you'd have to look further and see if you see budding cells in there as well. And on this one, this is a PAS stain slide. You can see the hyphae in there, and on the right-hand side, about maybe 4 o'clock, you see all the budding yeast cells are sitting in there, the round cells. And that's typical of malassezia furfur, particularly in skin lesions. And the next slide shows you the same thing with the budding cells in there, as well as the hyphae that are sitting in the background. This the next slide is actually from a lung biopsy and, and tissue that's deep and including blood you will find that the yeast cells of malassezia will be found and not the hyphae or pseudohyphae. You find just yeast cells, they're small, the smallest yeast that you've probably ever seen, and they look like small blastomyces uh, yeast cells. So this is a, the silver stain from the lung biopsy. And this uh, is a scanning electron micrograph just showing you what the hyphae look like in there. And you would find yeast cells sitting around amongst some of those as well. So this is how you would recognize malassezia. You could tell it pretty much uh, from the clinical condition that it produces, and if it's a skin lesion, teeny versa color, you could you could expect to find the the hyphae and pseudo hyphae. With other things, other infections that are deeper, you would expect to find the yeast cells, and probably not uh, those hyphae or pseudo hyphae. So this is a discussion of candida and malassezia furfur.